All right, so last lesson of the unit. I would say it is one of the easier ones. That doesn't, that's not to say it's easy, it's just easier. It is less challenging. There's a little bit of algebra involved. There is still some interpreting involved, but the algebra is probably not as unfamiliar or not quite as tricky as some of the other stuff that we've had to do. Um, you know, so these are doable. Maybe people aren't successful because they don't really do all of the practice because they think they're too easy. They go, oh, that's easy. I don't need to practice it. Okay, so I think you do want to do the practice, um, obviously, and see some of the different circumstances that can happen. Because again, there are some different outcomes that can happen. And uh, so you want to experience that. So there's kind of two types. We're starting with the easier of the two types. Um, and so we're just going to solve these for real number system. And to some extent, these ones you've actually kind of even done before because you do this a little bit of this in grade nine. Does anybody know how to solve this? Maddie? Can you do like the square root of x Okay, so interesting question. Remember we talked about this. Just watch, don't write it down. Um, square root of m times n is equal to the square root of m times the square root of n. And we use that when we reduce the radical in the quadratic formula. But remember we said, or I said, not equal. So it doesn't work when you're adding numbers. The square root of 6 plus 3, which is 9, which is 3, is not equal to the square root of 3 plus the square root of 6. Think about it, right? That's not going to work out. So good idea, David? Could you square the 3 to get rid of the square root? Yeah, well, we're going to square both sides. And so it gets rid of the square root, and we have to square the 3 as well. Exactly right. Right, so we're just doing the opposite to undo the operation. The opposite of taking a square root is squaring something. So I'm going to show this this first one. Whoops, I try to show it properly, uh, but normally I don't bother showing that step. Okay, so this is x plus four equals nine. Subtract four from both sides, we get x equals five. See what I mean by easy? The 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 ones on the second page are a little bit more challenging, but that's the essence of all of these. You're squaring both sides to undo the radical and then solving from there. Did anybody already know that x was 5? Yeah, you could, you could have solved that one by inspection. Some, we, need, we need something to be the square root to give us 3. Well, that's 9. So what number plus 4 gives you 9? Well, it's 5, right? And again, doing a left side, right side check, even just in your head, because it's probably fairly easy, or on your calculator, not a bad idea, okay? It's just to make sure that you haven't made some kind of little mistake. What about this one? It's a little bit different. What do you think we have to do to solve this one? I think if we square everything right this right now, it's actually going to make our lives harder. Evan? Okay, so we're going to move the 4 over. Subtract 4 from both sides gives us 6. And then what? Yep. Yeah, divide both sides by 2. So again, I'm going to show this. Normally I wouldn't because it's pretty easy stuff. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Now there are cases where when you have a 2 up front, you do not want to divide by 2. Okay, so you don't have to divide by 2. But in this case, because 6 is divisible by 2 and it works out, then that's the right thing to do. Now we're ready to square both sides. And add 4 to both sides to get 13. If at this stage I had squared both sides, it would be 2 root x minus 4 all squared and 6 squared. I have to square the 2 as well, so it becomes 4 bracket x minus 4 equals 36. I would have two op options here. I could divide by 4, which would be the better option in this case. Okay, and that's what I would recommend you to do. But what if I didn't? I would get 4x minus 16 equals 36. 
add 16 to both sides like this math is starting to get a little bit bigger and maybe harder to do in your head divide both sides by four you still get 13 but you know a lot more steps and a little bit harder mental math okay but there are questions where you have to square both sides with like a number over there so you have to square eight as well okay let's do another one so i'm going to square both sides Add one, and we're done. That one was easy. Good. <laughs> How did you know? It's too easy. Everybody's okay with this. You shouldn't be. What's wrong with this one, Maddie? Oh, so you subbed it back in. Left side, right side, check. You put 10 in, 10 minus 1 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. Now, some people say, well, isn't it plus or minus 3? That's when you are taking the square root. If the square root is already there, it's called the primary square root, I think. And it means it's positive. If it wanted it to be negative, they would have put a negative out front. Okay, so only when you're taking the square root is it a plus minus. So, yeah, it's positive 3, not negative 3. The other thing is, can you take a square root of something and get a negative? Shouldn't we have noticed on the very first line that this wasn't going to work? Okay, so this one has no solution. This is extraneous. For these easy ones, you're allowed to just do it by inspection. In fact, watch what we're going to do with the next one. So I gotta move the seven over. Did you have a question? Let's do this one first. I gotta move the seven over. When you're solving these easy ones, you can stop right here and go, therefore no solution. Listen carefully. If you complete the question like we did in C, then you have to state that it's extraneous because you got a solution. It says X equals 10. Imagine you wrote on your page X equals 10, therefore no solution. You're like, what do you mean no solution? You just said X is 10. Isn't that a solution? So you have to state that it's extraneous and then state, therefore there's no solution. Okay. But for these easy ones, you can just say it's extraneous. The next ones are going to be a little bit trickier. So, um, we have to do a little bit more before we can just state extraneous. But for these ones, you can do that. Or my recommendation is stop there. <laughs> Once you get to the negative, okay, and you've, and you've dealt with everything else, like you have to fully isolate. But if it's negative on the other side, then there's no solution. You can just stop right away. Maddie, what was your question? No, I was just going to explain. Oh, you were going to say what to do and notice that it wasn't going to work? Good. Any other questions before we move on? These are the easier ones, pretty easy. Isolate for the radical, square both sides, then isolate for x. Watch for negatives. Okay, what's different about this one? Yeah, there's an x on the other side. There's two x's, one's under the radical and one's not. Okay, so these ones are gonna be a little bit trickier. So be careful. When we square both sides, this is what you might want to do, some of you. Like think about square, think about what would happen if you squared both sides. We're still squaring both sides. Are you doing this? Because that's wrong. That's big time wrong in grade 12. Okay, that's a grade 10 mistake. So again, I'm going to show this for this first one, but normally we don't. You're squaring the entire side, not just the individual parts. So what happens when you square x minus 5? Zach? Good. It's a trinomial, right? So x, the root of x plus 1 all squared is just x plus 1. But this is x minus 5 times x minus 5, which is x squared minus 5x. This is the only time in this class I'm ever going to do this because we should be able to 
go straight to this. You should go straight from that to that. If you need to, if you need to write out the steps, then write out the steps. If that's how you're going to be successful, then absolutely do it. But again, push yourself, challenge yourself. If this was something that you were pushed to do in, in grade 10. So by now, maybe it was hard before, but maybe now you're going to get it. Okay. You could write one or the other of those steps, or I mean, whatever you have to do, but okay. Make sure you get that trinomial. Now, what do we do? Now we have a polynomial equation. It's only quadratic, so it's just going to be like grade 10. But yeah, we have to get everything to one side and have it equal to zero. So I'm subtracting x, so I get minus 11x. And I'm subtracting 1, so I get plus 24. And I'm looking for two numbers that add to 11 and multiply to 24. 8 and 3. So x minus 8, x minus 3 equals 0. Therefore, x equals 8 and 3. But we're not done. Okay, so there's something funny going on with these kinds of questions, and it has to do with this. Just watch. I'm going to erase this because I'm going to use this space for something else. Square root of x plus 1 is the square root function with a shift to the left 1. So it would be here and go like that. Remember doing those last year? x minus 5 is a line that goes like this. They don't cross twice. They cross once. I mean, this is just a sketch, but those functions are, I think it's obvious enough. I've sketched it appropriately. You can see they only cross once. Very good. Okay, so when we square everything, we're adding back that second part. You don't have to know this, but this is just, again, the visual of what's happening. We're adding back that second part. So that's why the way we're solving finds the other solution. But only one of them is going to work. Which one do you think is going to work? Eight. But this is not how we figure that out. So there's two different ways you can do this. I'm going to show you both. And you should know how to do them both because one you already know how to do and you should be able to do it properly and it's with a left side, right side check. If it's on a test, you have to do it formally or the test might say show a formal check. Okay, so you need to know how to do this. So we're going to start by checking uh, x equals 8. When I'm doing a check and I don't know if x equals 8, I put a question mark through the equal sign because it's like I'm asking if it's equals. Okay, you don't have to do that, but kind of a neat little symbol. Left side equals root x plus 1, which equals root 8 plus 1, which is root 9, which is 3. You don't have to show all these steps. You just show the substitution, and then you can go straight to solving as many steps as you want. But this is a formal left side, right side check where you split up the left side from the right side. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Do you remember how to do this? And left side equals right side. So you say left side equals right side. Therefore, x does indeed equal 8. Now we're going to check x equal 3. Three plus one is four, square root of four is two. Three minus five is negative two. Also, when you check, you go all the way back to the question. Don't check one of the other steps, okay? You gotta go all the way back to the original question to check before any rearranging of any kind. Left side does not equal right side, therefore x does not equal 3. And for these, again, I know it feels redundant <laughs> that we kind of write these statements over and over again, but you're going to need a therefore statement to summarize every single time. Therefore, x equals 8 is the solution. 
Because you could have two solutions. Some of these will have two solutions. I could have zero solutions. Right? I could have two if it kind of does that and then that. I could have one or I could have zero. Right? I could have zero like this. So lots of things could happen. Any questions? So one option, whoops, is to do a left side, right side check. You have to check both. It can't be like, oh, I got lucky and I got the one that works. No, because they might both work. And this is what's required for a full solution for full marks because you could have extraneous solutions. So we need to account for that. Okay. The other method is doing the same thing that we've kind of been doing. And I think some of you will like this because you'll be able to do it. You'll find it easy, but some people might not like it. And the left side, right side check is just safer and easier. It's just a bit more writing. Okay. But this one uses this same kind of uh, talking about domains that we've been talking about during the absolute value stuff. Okay. So for this method, I do have to isolate for the radical part first. And I, I have to get this part done. And then at that stage, I think about what has to happen for, these, like, for this question to make sense. And there are two things. There's two parts to this. This can't be negative. Do you agree? So 4 minus 6 is negative 2 square root of negative 2. Not going to work. So x minus 6 has to be greater than or equal to 0. It could be 0, greater than or equal to 0, which means x is greater than or equal to 6. But also, this has, can't be negative. That's what we saw on the first page. When, when you're taking the square root of a number, you can't get a negative. So also 8 minus x has to be greater than or equal to 0, which means negative x is greater than or equal to negative 8, which means x is less than or equal to 8. Okay, so notice how you have to get this kind of uh, like isolated to this point. So I know what the right side is. And both the radicand or the argument of the, of the radical of the square root, that can't be negative, but also that can't be negative. And I can actually combine these. You don't have to do this, but I can combine these. So these are numbers, since we were just talking about this, you know, why not? Ac numbers that are bigger than six and less than eight. So isn't that six less than x less than or equal to eight? Do you agree? And actually all I did was like this, the small n was pointing to the six, so I just got, have it pointing to the six. Now you don't always get that kind of a statement when you do these. So if you're gonna use this method, just be aware of that. They don't always combine like that. There's another way that they can actually combine and if you, we're not gonna do an example of it. So if you get to it and you're confused, just make sure you ask. So let's square both sides. Now this is kind of written backwards, which I don't like. So I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to move the x and the negative 6 over. So that looks like minus 10x. Nope, sorry, I'm adding the wrong thing to the wrong thing. That's minus 17x. And uh, 64 plus 6 is 70. And some of these numbers you'll find in the homework are kind of big when you're factoring, but this one's not too hard. Two numbers that add to 17 and multiply to 70. 10 and 7, yeah. So x minus 10 and x minus 7. Therefore, x equals 10 and x equals 7. And now what? Can you see which one fits differently? 
Yeah, and which one does? Seven. seven is between six and eight. Ten is not. Okay, so then we say state extraneous. And again, I do want you to do a therefore statement. So a lot less writing. Folks, if you're going to use this method, you have to show those restrictions. You have to show the domain uh, where our answers can exist. Okay? So if you're not showing all of this over here, then you are doing a left side, right side check. You may not just state one of them is extraneous. People sometimes think it's always the biggest or it's always the smallest or it's always, and it's not. There is no pattern. There might be, uh, often it works out this way or more often it works out this way, but you can't just always say the negative one won't work or the big one won't work. That's not how these work, okay? It can, be, it can be neither, it can be both. It could be the negative one or it could be the positive one. Like you can make up questions that work out every way, okay? Any questions? That's it for that lesson.